now that we're into the heat of summer and we're into July, uh, this is a great time of year for a lot of outdoor activities. Kids want to go to the pool, and it's also a great time of year for my favorite fungus, Rhizoctonia, that causes brown patch and turf. And this week, while we're having high temperatures, and in the last few weeks, we've seen a lot of brown patch develop uh, in landscapes across Nebraska. And the reason for that is, is because we've got the temperature now that's really favorable. In all of your landscapes, if you have a, a fescue lawn, particularly, that's where we see brown patch showing up the most. And with that, anytime we have temperatures that get over at nighttime, over that 70 to 75 degree mark, that's when we start seeing this fungus active. The symptoms of brown patch that we'll see are gonna be these, like the name suggests, large brown areas in the turf. Uh, if we look at into those individual patches, what we'll see are leaves that have these lesions on them or, or dead portions on the grass blade that have a real irregular margin. Many times uh, those lesions typically will not go across the grass blade, but will be real irregular with that dark uh, purple, dark brown margin. Conditions that favor brown patch are, are any conditions that favor longer periods of leaf wetness in the turf. Now, if we have shade uh, at certain points of the day, uh, those times we're gonna see longer periods of dew on the turf. Uh, if you're running those sprinklers at night, that's the worst thing you can do to really favor a uh, brown patch. You know, the optimum time for irrigation is early in the morning. That way we reduce that, that dew period by actually washing that turf off. And, and that might be a little counterintuitive because we think of wetting that turf that we're keeping it wet longer, but actually studies have shown that if we'll put that irrigation on in the morning, that'll reduce that layer on the turf and it'll dry quicker. The other thing that really favors brown patch is high levels of fertility. So, you know, if you're following the recommendations that Rock and others talk about on the show, not fertilizing that turf in midsummer, that's going to be the best thing. Uh, because if you're in an excess of nitrogen situation, that's also going to favor brown patch. And again, this is a disease that mostly we'll see in those fescue lawns, but we will occasionally see it in bluegrass. Now, when we're looking at management uh, for brown patch, we're, we're going to target a, a few different things. You know, and first of all, this is a disease that, that doesn't necessarily uh, take the turf out totally. It will thin the turf, and you can really uh, work with it by just or manage it by overseeding in the fall. But if you'd like to have that, that turf looking good and green and not having these brown patches that we've talked about and the symptoms that we see, then we're going to be looking at possibly a fungicide application. Uh, but first, I like to try those more green approaches and make sure we're, we're cutting back any kind of fertility in the summer, that we're, we're following good turf management. We're not running those sprinklers uh, at night, you know, watering infrequently as, as much as possible, watching those dew periods. And those are the two main things. And then if that's not holding the disease back uh, and we're still uh, have a turf that's, that's not having a good quality, then that's when we're looking at fungicide applications. And there's a, a, a many different fungicides that can be used for brown patch control. Those that contain strobilurin fungicides are some of the better products, but there's a wide range that can be found uh, in the NEB guide. 